Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Uh, <clears throat> recently voted by Beer Gut Magazine uh, Board of Editors to be the, the SQL Server Consultancy most likely to get sued by Beer Gut Magazine. I'm not sure exactly what they meant by that. I'm, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of you, Joel. Sue me if you want. Uh, Today's video, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about resource semaphore query compile weights, because uh, this is one that I, I've, I've run into several times in, in recent consulting history, and uh, it's always fun to talk about because, I mean, it's not happening to my server, uh, it's, you know, happening to someone else's server. I just get to tell them why it's happening, teach them how to fix it. And uh, occasionally, even if I'm, if I'm really lucky, help them fix it, which is usually a process of breaking up those awful, giant, monolithic queries that developers insist on writing into smaller, more manageable little chunks. So I have in front of me, us, you, we, uh, everyone, everyone who can see the screen, uh, this query, which is a really stupid query. It is just a series of cross joins from this tiny little post type table, which has like eight rows in it. The thing is, if you do a cross join enough times, the way I have here, and uh, I want everyone out there in developer land to have a newfound level of respect for me because I started my, uh, my common table expression numbering at zero. Um, would also like to remark, these are probably the most readable common table expressions ever written. Perhaps that would be a nice award, Beer Gut Magazine. Perhaps stop threatening me. I'm nice to you. So the end result of this, and I'm gonna show you the query plan for it, is a query that takes, well, I mean, first let's, let's marvel at this estimated subtree cost. Right, it doesn't even fit on the screen when I zoom in. Uh, doesn't, I'm not sure it'll even fit on the screen. I just have to scroll that one across. Uh, if anyone wants to uh, pause the video and count the number of zeros in there and figure out what this number would actually be, uh, I'm sure there's a, there's a national debt joke in there somewhere, right? <laughs> sure. Uh, but the important, semi-important thing here, aside from that gargantuan estimated subtree cost, is that this query uh, takes, well, takes about 740 megs of compiled memory, right? which I mean, you know, 740 megs, whatever, but com that's compiled memory. That's like not a query memory grant. It's not like a table that exists physically in the server. It's just 740 megs to figure out what the hell to do with this query plan. Uh, and it takes about 35 and a half seconds to compile. So like local factors involved, Depending on a few things, this will take anywhere between like 25 and 45 seconds to compile a plan. Uh, if you fiddle enough with compatibility levels and cardinality estimation models, uh, you might see something on the lower end, you might see something on the higher end. So um, let's see. Okay, there are two things about SQL Server Management Studio that have been irking the bejesus out of me lately. Uh, one is random window switching positions. I don't know why that happens. Uh, and the other is uh, sometimes like you ever like control an F to find something and like you see a bunch of orange stuff on the sidebar highlight. And then like if you like, uh, let's say you're in a store procedure and then you like hit F5 to change something in the store procedure and it brings up the results, the thing where it's just like query completed at whatever time. And then like you get rid of the results and then like the orange dots all move and all of a sudden like where there are hits for things, it's all wrong. It's been making me feel like a crazy person lately. Don't like it. Anyway, let's, let's make SQL Server, let's get revenge. Let's make SQL Server feel like a crazy person. So what I'm gonna do is show you a couple things about how you can uh, spot this happening and uh, well, I mean, we can talk a, talk a little bit about how to fix it, but I think I already just told you. Uh, stop writing gigantic queries, you fools. So uh, if we run these two queries, 
while there is nothing going on, we will see that my server, based on the amount of memory that I have, uh, has available to it uh, 64 slots in the small query compile gateway, 16 slots in the medium comp query compile gateway, and one coveted spot in the big query compile gateway. Since nothing is going on right now, nothing is very active. Well, I mean, the for some reason, the small gateway is active. Probably some background tasks doing stuff, hanging out, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I get, maybe it's active because uh, something has to be active and nothing else is going on. I don't know. Some of these DMVs are just wacky and goofy, and I don't wish to learn uh, much more about them than I have to. So, uh, based on these numbers, I don't know why I, I don't know why I threw that away. Based on these numbers, I have sixty-four plus sixteen, so six plus four, seventy, eighty plus one, eighty-one uh, total gateway slots for queries to compile in. Now, if you have uh, a bunch of small, low-cost queries, you can compile like infinite numbers of those. But as soon as queries require a little bit more effort and thought by the optimizer to compile a plan, they're going to start flooding into these gateways. And as the optimizer like figures out how much stuff it's going to put into compiling a plan for a query, uh, they're going to start traveling through these gateways until they, until, well, I mean, in this demo, they're going to, one's going to hit the big gateway. Uh, the rest are going to get stuck in other smaller gateways. So the way that we're going to do that is by having a pink cursor, of course. And what we're going to do is use SQL query stress, again, maintained by the lovely, talented Eric EJ. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to run 100 and, I guess it should probably be 160, 161 is good enough. Uh, I guess with 81, it should be 162, but you know, you know what they say about off by one errors. We're, gonna, we're just going to roll with this because this will do a good enough job. We're going to flood this server with requests. And we are going to be connected into the, the remote DAC so we can see these things really start to have problems. All right. So uh, this looks pretty stable now as far as the results go. So I'm going to hit cancel here. Uh, normally, I'd be game to let stuff keep running and like, you know, show you what happens as like stuff finishes and moves. But you know what? Uh, I, have to, I have to do a pre-con on Friday in Nashville, and I don't want to brick my laptop between now and then. So I'm going to be a little superstitious here and not push my luck. Just not pushing your luck as far as superstitious enough. So anyway, uh, what we're going to see is up in this top result set where I'm, I'm interrogating the gateway DMV, uh, we will see that all of these slots have become active and that all of these slots have accumulated a number of waiters. All these queries are waiting to compile a plan. Right now, there's only one query on my server that can compile anything, right? And that's this lucky, oh man, it was almost number 13. Uh, lucky query number 14. It's like lucky number 11, right? <laughs> uh, so this is the only one, uh, I mean, I'm gonna, again, just gonna cross my fingers and hope that there's only one null row in here and that every other row is showing resource semaphore query compile. Ooh la la, what a beautiful demo that is. So only this one query is allowed in that big gateway. And this will, if you have more memory available, uh, you will have more gateways open to you. Uh, I think once you get past like 128 gigs, you start getting more of them. I forget the exact number. It's, I'm sure it's documented somewhere very clearly and somewhere very easy to find. Those Microsoft docs are just legendary for their uh, good, goodness. Yeah. So one query, can, one query can run and one query can do anything useful. Now... Again, you know, this is uh, a demo query designed to do something terrible. In real life, your queries probably, uh, I mean, they, they might also have nine common table expressions in them. Who knows, right? You, Y'all are crazy. Uh, but really, you would just be looking for, like, really big, complicated queries that SQL Server would have to think particularly hard about when a plan is getting compiled for it. All right, now, if you're using stored procedures or uh, parameterized queries, Generally, 
you only take a hit on this when they initially compile or if they recompile for some reason. That's why I have the recompile hint on here, because if this thing initially compiled a plan, other queries would just start using it and laughing at me. Right? So like once you get past the compilation phase and the plan gets cached, other queries can be like, ah, gotcha. But in real life, this often ha just doesn't happen with, usually just doesn't happen with like one big awful query doing stuff. There's usually like, like a whole cavalry of awful queries just riding into your SQL server and shooting the place up. So uh, one way that you can find queries that take a long time to compile is by using SP Quickie Store. And if you use it uh, in expert mode, it will return uh, additional result sets that have compilation metrics in them. And what I mean by that is you'll have this top section up here and uh, you know, you, you might see, I don't know, there's probably nothing in here that's so eye catching except, I mean, maybe the fact that we couldn't render this, this query plan as XML uh, from, the, from the query store DMV. Um, I've been meaning to do something in here where like if, if I can't render the plan, then I'll like, produce some query so you can get it as like just the raw XML, like the raw XML as text so you can save it off as a SQL plan and reopen it. Uh, reopening query plan XML that's too big to render as XML like in the database works just fine as opening a, a file. Uh, I, don't know when, I don't know why Windows is so much better at it than SQL Server Management Studio, who knows? Maybe it's SQL Server, maybe it's Management, it's hard to tell. I mean, SQL Server has the error about 128 nested nodes of XML, so it's probably SQL Server as usual. I'm not gonna let SQL Server off the hook. As much as I love to blame and get mad at Management Studio for things, SQL Server is no angel. But if we look here uh, in the results, uh, we're gonna have this section down here called Compilation Stats. And just because I know the query that I care about, uh, I'm going to look here and I'm going to say, well, you are query ID 14510. And I'm going to, this is ordered just by query ID ascending for some reason. I didn't, I didn't really put a lot of thought into the ordering here. I should probably make, have, have probably have some more useful metric <laughs> than query ID. Uh, be the ordering principle here. Uh, I'm not sure if I would make it uh, total compiles or average compile stuff, but wow, what was 14509? Where are you in here? Oh, you were the, you were the other, you, see, ah, look at, there it is. There's, there's another instance of this query from when I was running it. Look, look at how prepared I was for this demo. But if we look at these two lines in, uh, in the quickie store results for compilation stats, uh, you will see one of these uh, took about 30 seconds to compile and another one took about 24 and a half seconds to compile. So neither one of these from my brief tinkering hit the 45 second mark, but in the past they have, they're just not in these results. So uh, sorry about that. I'm sure that's terribly disappointing and you're gonna hate me forever and you're never gonna forgive me this injustice, this curse I put upon your land. Uh, so yeah, what I've shown you today is uh, sort of how you can figure out which queries are uh, s struggling with resource semaphore query compile. Uh, you generally wanna look for things that took a long time to compile or stuff that uh, if we come over here a bit, we're gonna see, no, 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 where's the compile memory line? There we go. Some compile memory, lots of compile memory in here. So you want to, stuff that, you want to look for stuff that has high compile memory, probably high compile time. Uh, you can find that stuff in uh, Query Store using SP Quickie Store. Uh, you can see exactly how much you have available uh, uh, gateway-wise uh, for compiling queries. And uh, you can usually see uh, queries that are stuck waiting for memory to compile by looking at SP who is active and seeing the resource semaphore query compile weight pile up through a whole bunch of queries. Uh, so if I have to leave you with anything, it's don't write queries like this, unless you need to show people resource semaphore query compile demos. Uh, but in real life, you shouldn't be writing big complex monster queries. You should be kind to your SQL server because it probably has a lot of other problems. You don't want to make them worse. All right.
why pile everything on? It's like, like making someone in AA quit smoking. Why, why would you want to do that to someone? Giving up their only joy in life. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to do. Suppose pack bags or something. Um, I, don't really, I don't really have a good game plan for tonight. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you like this video, I always appreciate a thumbs up. And if you like learning stuff about SQL Server, I, I would strongly suggest the four Beer Gut Magazine Soothes Me Into Oblivion uh, subscribing to my channel so that you can get big, glaring, blaring notification every time I finish uploading one of these things. And hopefully... Hopefully after it's been processed up to HD, because you don't want to watch these in low definition. You want to make sure that I am in vivid detail. Don't let YouTube's downscaling turn me into, like, Minecraft pixel art. Turn it up to HD. Eric Darling in HD. That's the way I was meant to be experienced. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this will probably be the last video I record this week. I've gone a bunch, and then... Uh, next week, I'll pick back up with some, some stuff for you because I care about you. And I want you to know the awful things I know. Anyway, thank you for watching.